Hello, so today I want to talk about downward dog, downward facing dog. And in vinyasa classes, we do a lot of downward dog and a lot of people do it incorrectly. So first, let's see what how downward dog looks like. This is downward dog, inverted V. And how to measure the distance between your hands and feet, there are a couple of options. So you can always come into the plank where the shoulders stack over the wrists and heels over the toes. Without moving hands and feet, lift the hips up, downward dog. That would be downward dog. Also, another good measurement, it is extended child's pose. You're your big toes touching, you sit down onto your heels, the chest is on the floor, the fingertips walking towards the top of your mat as much as you can. Now, without moving your hands and feet, tuck the toes, lift the hips up, downward dog. You can always come back into the plank and see if you actually made it. And guess what? It is pretty accurate measurement. A lot of te teachers will teach to come from into downward dog from tabletop position. And I find it that is way too short downward dog. The heels don't have to be on the ground, but if you come into the plank, you can come into the plank. So the best way to measure is from the plank. And then lift the hips up towards the sky. And so if you don't have space in your hamstrings, bend the knees. You want to maintain straight spine. And a lot of people that don't have space in the shoulders will round the spine and, and just kind of go like this. This is not downward dog. So you want to lift the hips up, bend the knees, maybe bend the elbows, especially if you have double jointed elbows. So you want to squeeze the elbows in, release the crown of the head towards the ground, engage the core, scoop the hips up towards the sky. And then this time you start straightening the legs, heels towards the ground. So that would be downward dog. Also, a lot of people in downward dog do not engage the core, and that's important. So if you see that your belly is drooping, and it's kind of, you're, maybe you're even very flexible, so you overextend. You don't want to do that either. It's not good for the shoulders. Squeeze the elbows in, release the crown of the head towards the ground. Now engage the core, scoop the hips up towards the sky. I often use this analogy like a peacock, opening up your tail, you're spreading the sit bones, lifting the kneecaps towards the sky, you have a lot more space in your hamstrings, and squeeze the elbows in, keep engaging the core. And this downward dog. I hope you found this video helpful and you learned something new today.